Welcome back to my channel. So, you know what time it is? This is Thursday. So, have you ever asked yourself, what shouldn't you do, you know, when you're starting to tour or, or if you've been doing it a week, a year, months? So, this video is going to answer that question, hopefully. I think it will. So, let's get to it. Well, first I'm going to say, I'm, ha I'm having an issue with something that happened years ago with Turo. So, when I first started, I, I told myself that if my cars ever got to an accident, I was going to use my personal insurance and not use Turo. So beyond what the 85% plan, take the money and well, and then use Turo. That was the plan. So in 2017, I had no accident, I have nothing. But in 2018, in March, I got, I got into an accident. One of my people renting my cars got into an accident. So I was like, oh, damn, like, okay, what am I gonna do? You know, I took to the shop, you know, it was actually about two grand to fix it if I paid cash, or they're gonna charge USA four grand. And I was like, okay, I should have done the cash, but I didn't, I went with USA, you know, so I told them I did it, and you know, I was like, okay, whatever, did it, boom, car got fixed. And then six months later, you know, I also used my insurance for all my tolls and all that stuff. There, were, I had a lot of cars, so there was a lot of tolls. You know, they added everything up and they called me and they, and they asked me, what am I doing? Why am I calling them so much roadside to get towed and stuff? And I said, cars need to get towed. And then they said, um, we're gonna do an investigation on you and your membership could be at risk. So I got another phone call months later from some third party saying, I see cars on Turo with your license plate and asked me a thousand questions, this and that. And I was saying, well, it wasn't me. So, you know, I was like, it wasn't me and whatever he knew i'm obviously you know it's me and whatever so you know i got another call from usa and he's saying they're canceling my membership and all this and i have stuff with them all kinds of stuff and they canceled everything i'm like great you know that sucks i had like i was paying i've been paying them for like 10 years and yeah i just stopped paying and whatever i thought it was over whatever so then a year and a half later i got a phone call saying that i got a warrant for my arrest this was actually last week like insurance fraud like how? Like, what the heck? Like, that small? Like, USA did all this stuff? I'm like, oh. So, you know, I didn't get arrested. I, I went in, went into the sheriff's and do whatever, do whatever got bail. So, I went to court on Monday and I got all the documents and my lawyer looking at it and saying that this was because of the accident and because of the other car. You know, one, I never even told them anything about the other car. So, the person who was renting my car gave my information, which I'm gonna tell you, don't ever have your insurance card in the car. You should only have the Turo card, you know, the accident card, and whatever your state of safety, that's it. Do not have, your registration, do not have your insurance card in there. Because this is what's, this is a possibility of what will happen. People will try to make claims on your insurance, even though your insurance should not be involved with shooting Turo's insurance. So, let's get back to USA. I found out USA paid for, you know, the other person's claims. I thought Turo paid the other car out. I, I, I thought that. I'm like, I was shocked when the lawyer told me that they paid that out. So, you know, the moral of the story is do not use your own insurance to fix these cars. You know, I'm learning the hard way see what happens, probably get fined, pay everything back. And this is something that Turo doesn't tell you. Turo, actually, the way they do their business, they actually kind of hint you to use your own insurance. They don't want you to use theirs. They don't They don't want you, they, they don't. You know, if they didn't want you to use your own insurance, from the beginning, they would be considered an insurance company. They would've got all, everything, all the legal stuff to be an insurance company. They don't want to do this because this will cost them a lot of money. You know, that that's why. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. That is why that they, they, they say, if you look on it, go try and book a car, it says that they are not an insurance company. They're not. They're not. You know, their insurance plan, they're not insurance plans. They're just money that they'll pay the fixed cars, but they're not insurance. They say that bold and bold. But they're not. And that's why. So that's the main thing, because you know, I've Recently, I've heard and I've read people that try to use their insurance to fix their cars for Turo. Don't do that. So, also, if you have personal insurance and not commercial insurance on your cars, do not have your um, 
license plate showing on your Turo account. Like, just don't do it. Because I'm, I'm gonna say, all insurance companies, they have a third party who goes on Turo and looks at the cars to see if their cars are on there. And if they find it, they're gonna give you a call. Out of the blue, you're gonna be like, you'll be shocked and be like, what, how? Don't do that. That's no, no, Turo doesn't tell you that. I mean, sometimes Turo goes on these, you know, go onto the site and they put like a Turo sign on the license plate, but not all the time. So just black it out. And I already said that. And another thing, I do not use Turo's roadside. Why? Because Turo's roadside is $200. It's either for the person renting or it's either to you. If they find out that the problem, the reason why the car broke down is a mechanical issue that's not caused by the renter, they're gonna charge you $200. Simple as that. I've heard sometimes they've charged $200 without even getting the car towed, which is crazy, I don't understand that. So the best thing for you or, or to tell them is to tell them to call you so you can have something set up. Like for me, like where I get my oil changes, the car dealership has a, a partnership with DriveShare and they have like unlimited towing during the time that you know I got an oil change. So that works out perfect for me. I wish I knew that back when I first started, I would have done that instead of use my own insurance for all these tows. It would have been so much easier, so much better for me. Didn't know that, but now I do, and now you do. So, um, also, unless you have some high performance vehicle, you go to do tires fast. So really just buy the cheapest tires, like what, Amazon, Walmart, and just put it on there. I, I believe that I mean, just putting on expensive tires makes no sense. And having expensive rims, custom rims, I mean, Turo ain't, ain't gonna pay for all that if something happens anyway, you know, there's no point. Especially about the rim, people people mess up your rims, you know, they, I mean, they're not paying to, to fix that stuff anymore, so it doesn't make sense to have nice rims because people are definitely going to mess up the rims. They don't know how to drive your car, they don't. Maybe my cars, I don't even care, I just let it go. All my cars got road crash. I don't care. Like, it, it's irrelevant, it, it is what it is. Um, this. Um, if you um, if you haven't gotten to an accident yet, or if you just got a car got into an accident, the first thing you need to find out is which insurance plan did they take? Did they take the minimum, or did they take the premium, or did they not take it at all? So let's say they said that they didn't take anything at all. That is great for you, because then you know that if you file with Turo, Turo is going to charge them three thousand dollars. Tell them that, you know that will get them to give you some money you know something you know if they still want to don't want to give you money whatever just do the tarot and see what happens but that's what i would do i'll give you something especially if you're on the 85 percent plan that would really help you out because you know either that or you're just on your own i mean that's just a chance that you take so if they're on the minimum i believe the max that turtle will charge is 500 dollars. and then obviously uh, what's it the premier i think it's premium no i think it's premium that is, um, what? that's nothing. So if they say that, then you're definitely not getting anything. So that's good, because you know, people don't tell you that, that you make a claim, even if you're on 85% plan, they're gonna charge the renter. You know, especially with no insurance, they're gonna charge them thousands of dollars. And that's big. And also, you know, um, Turo, what they call gray transaction, gray market transactions, is basically no cash transaction. If somebody offers you cash, do not take it under any circumstance. Any, because Turo, Turo doesn't like that, you can lose your account over that. Just don't do it. Just do everything through the reimbursement tool. Just don't do it. And also, you know, you you see Turo on TV, you know, those commercials are really nice, you know, like you can rent out your, your personal car and make this money, make that. It's easy, it's passive income. I gotta tell you, it is not passive, it is not easy, and it's not simple. This is a hard business. <laughs> you gotta put a lot of work into it, and there's a lot of issues that will, not might, will arise when you're doing this business. I mean, I can, I can tell you that. A lot of people quit because of this, because they don't understand how Turo works and how strict Turo is. You know, Turo is for the renter, not for the host. You know, just if you, if you go win with that mindset, then you you won't be you won't be surprised when you find out that Turo has done something shady to you because that is exactly what they did. Simple as that. I mean, 
you gotta think like that. That's, that's just how it is with this company. There's not that many around, they don't have much competition, and they do whatever they want. Change policies like crazy, which you already know if you've been, you've been doing it for the last six months, you know that they have changed policy, the mileage and the cleaning, it changed up like a lot, you know. So, and another thing, like that you know if you if you have a damage claim or a total loss and you don't like it and you want to go to fair claims you know fair claims is when you go to the what is it the dma and they it's like a third party and they basically come to a conclusion who should pay if they should pay if they shouldn't pay now i think recently it's 300 dollars, and they make you pay that regardless so basically anything that's claimed under 200 dollars, there's no point in going to fair claims because you're going to pay 300 dollars you see what that's what Toro does, that's how shitty they are. So anything over, regardless, if you win or lose, you're going to pay $300 for a fair claim. That's just, that's just the way it is. That's how they do it, and that's how they stop people from doing fair claims. I've never done a fair claim, personally, but I've heard over and over and over again how they do people on the fair claims. Hopefully I never deal with that, but that's something that you need to know when you're doing Toro. And one other thing, Especially on the mainland, I don't have trackers in my cars because I'm in Hawaii. But on the mainland, you gotta have trackers in your car. And if you have a situation and like the person doesn't want to return the car and you know where it is, go get your car. Simple as that. Don't wait for Turo to do all this demand letter and all this. Just go get your car as soon as possible. Whatever they got the key, you can charge them for another key on there. Just get your car. Just get it. Simple as that. Don't let it sit there. Let them do whatever they're gonna do. And just go get your car. Simple as that. And the last thing is this airport issue. Um, uh, most airports, Turo, I know, like I said, Turo is not for the hosts. You know, if Turo was for the hosts, Turo would have gotten all set up at every airport in the US, which they did not. There are that very few. Most airports, do not like people doing commercial activity without having permits. So, and they have like a thousand dollar fines. You probably could get arrested for that, but definitely get charged. I almost got charged with another business that I was doing at the airport. So I know not to do that. So that's big. You know, I've talked to some new people and they don't understand the airport situation. You could just go there and put in the parking lot. I'm like, yeah, don't do that. That will cost you a lot of money. So I hope that this has helped you out, you know, giving you more insight on you know, if you're doing tour ride, if you want to get into tour, you know, how good it is, how bad it is. I hope this helped you out. If you liked it, you know, if you have any comments, you know, leave leave me some comments and I'll answer them. I'm on YouTube all the time, so I'll get to it quickly. So if you like the video, you know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Okay, thanks.